Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain and Paint and Porcelain Exchange. And today we're going to do um, uh, the final fire on our white poppy vase. So this is what we're going to be working on. This is the poppy. And all we're going to do this time is um, we're going to darken the center. We're going to be darkening um, around the poppy and we're going to be adding the stems and the leaves and the buds. Okay, so that, that shouldn't be too difficult, really. It'll be a very simple project. And this is a simple project you can do with students or anybody. I did, my granddaughter and I took this particular uh, class together. Hers turned out as well as mine, and at the time she was eight years old. <laughs> so this is an easy one, and a lot of people can do it, and I think you could start grandchildren if they're older on it too. Um, the colors that you're gonna need are Pretty much the same as last week, but I'll just go over them in case you need them again. This is old ivory. I kind of got this all dumped and so it kind of looks icky. Um, this is deep blue green. This is um, a yellow green or a chartreuse if you have it. And this is that funny one. Now you don't need to have it, but it's called celadon. But you see how pretty it is? It's a pretty, pretty color. Um, this is a moss green if you have it. Um, uh, Copenhagen gray or any gray will work. It doesn't matter and dark green and then i have a tan down here you don't have to have the tan the tan is optional the celadon is optional but i wanted you to know what colors um the person that taught me this was um uh used on hers i'm uh painting on this um i try to use something so like a little bit drying so i am using the turpenoid um natural or you know if you have something that's a um not an open medium, but a semi-open medium, be good because it's round, you know, or square as this may be. And as you're working around it, hold it. But as you're working around it, then you want to make sure that you don't get into the other stuff. And if you have a semi-drying medium, it'll kind of protect it a little bit. All righty, I'm going to put you down. So I'm going to be using my number 10 quill brush to, to start with. And we're going to work on the, the inside of the... Um, gray. I'm side loading with gray and I'm just going to start here and just put, I'm going to tap it first. I'm just going to put a little more gray in as we do our poppy here. If it curls over, you want to make sure that you see the curl. And don't worry about this gray being there. You know, people say, oh, I don't want to do it because the gray's there, but there's so much white, and you can always pat it out, too, if you don't like it. I'm going to have to go back to my other... There we go. Okay, so we're going to go back here and do this. Right down to the center. And then this flips over, so I'm just going to come up here like that. And see how it flips? That flips it. So if you have little flips like that, take advantage of it, put a little dark around it, and then bring the dark down to the base of that section of the flower. So here's a good example. Bring it down to the base of that section of the flower right there. It doesn't really have any flip overs, and that'll help it. Here, you want to bring it down, but you want to bring it down like this. Let me get one more on there. Oh, too dark. And then I'm going to kind of pull it away. And if these are too dark, you can pull them away. It's just a feathering. Wipe it on your towel if you need to, to get a better handle on the color. And I think that helps. You can also go back in and wipe off where you want the um, white to be. So remember, that's the nice thing about using these colors on this. Now you want your color to come up a little further than mine does. You want it to come up to about halfway on this brush, see more like that, to give you a better coverage. And then this one, it covers down here. Oops. Let me pull it out. That's better. And we'll pull this out. That's better. Okay. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to clean my brush really well with turpenoid. So now I'm going through 
This has been, um, I've, I've dabbed this in the turpenoid to clean it off and I'm just trying to pull some of that color away so that this is a little whiter. There we go. I want this a little whiter up here. I want this white right here. You could also do this with an eraser. But you're just trying to pull out the color that you get on the white because you don't want it to stay on the white. You want the white to be truly white because this is a white poppy, not a green poppy. So I'm just pulling the color down just a little. So just play with it until you can see where the petals fold and it looks white to you. I guess that's what we're saying here. Then the next thing I'm going to do is work on the center here. And I'm going to start with my bright green because that's what we have on the center here. And then I'm going to use, try my six. There we go. Because I want this to be very, oh yeah, that's better. That's a six. You're side loading and you're just pulling towards the center. Trying to get that deep black in there, in the middle. Oh, come on. My black is giving me a hard time. You ever have that happen? Okay. I'm going to take it off this guy here because it doesn't need to be on him. Then you're going to take your black and use your, your itty bitty teeny tiny brush and just kind of I know I'm kind of in the way, I bet. Let me move it this way a little. And I just want it to have a few of these out here. And there you go, that's your center. And I am going to wipe out a little bit there. That's better. Okay, now we're going to do the leaves. You don't fit, do any more on the background. So if you had a problem, like you put your finger in it, or you see that one part of your background is lighter than the other, um, you probably should have done an extra fire and just done where you needed to do the background before this. And I think that that, that would really help. But right now, we're just gonna work with, with this right now. So, let me clean off some of these brushes and put them back. We're gonna use our, um, our number 10 or 12, whatever you have. Um, and it can be, it can be, you know, metal, it can be, and like this one and uh, either way whatever you're using and um, we're going to make the leaves now the leaves let me bring up this so you can see the leaves on this and, and I did this um, with a sharpie I found that when I wrote over the um, the padded background like this you know where it's got the the color on the padded background with a regular pencil like this, this is that um, paper, glass, plastic, metal pencil that we have. Um, it actually, when I fired it, it kind of stayed on there a little bit. So I was a little disappointed. So I, I'm using my Sharpie because I know my Sharpie fires out. Okay, the leaves kind of look like this. Oh. Come on, guy. They come down in a point and they're jagged like this. Okay. So you're going to want to probably, you can either draw them on or you can paint them in. The bud is just, just kind of like this. I just put it on like this 
and you might want to put a center section in. Don't do too much because you don't need those extra lines. You can paint that. And all of these are going to have these little pricky things coming out of them, okay? And the same thing with the stems. The stems are going to have pricky things coming out. So you want them to come out from all areas. You want them to come out from the middle, from the sides. And when you paint it in, you'll be using um, your pico pay to pull those out. So let's put this back up now. And now that you have an idea of where I'm going with these, you might want to do like I did. Um, I drew in a leaf here, here, um, here. No, that's a stem. This is a stem going over this way. This is a leaf and then a bud. Up here, I drew the stem down and over, so I had a little excitement. On this side, I drew the stem and it came over this way and I have a leaf and a bud like right here. And when you add the leaf, just kind of jag it around and make sure it's pointed on the end. And I have two more leaves up here. So we're gonna use a full load of, and this is a full load for those of you that don't know and you're brand new. You take your brush, this is a full load. And then I'm going to side load with the dark green. And that's doing C strokes in so that half your brush, all your brush has the green on it. And then this side from the middle out has the dark green. All right. We're going to start with this leaf and along the edge here where it goes under the flower, it's going to be dark. So you want your dark edge of your um, paint to go along there like this. Come to the middle, then go from there over to the other side. And you can do little, little strokes, you can do big strokes, whatever you want to get the color there, whatever works for you. I do little strokes at first, and I kind of lift at the end of them. And then I'm going to go down this side. It goes under this leaf here. And so that that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to take and I'm going to load my yellow, I mean my yellow green, full load, half load with the dark green and just go here because this is the deepest part, right? And just kind of get that color across there. And you're taking short strokes, maybe C strokes if you need them. Just like the roses, I go down and I follow it down the side. And that's why I drew it because it's easier just to draw it and follow it. And I come up this side just by tapping the color in. And I put a little dark at the bottom. Oh, hang on here. Let's get a little more dark on my brush. A little dark at the bottom there. And then I'm going to, and I bet a lot of you can guess, tap in. The veins. So we're going to come back and we're going to do this guy now, okay? And here, he's going to be dark just under this. He's on top of the other leaf. See, I'm just going to start a little bit above that. You've got to very carefully go around this flower. You can come to the middle like this. You can also come up the middle like this if you want. Some people do that, and that works well for them. And then they continue on around the flower. Just smooth it out as you go. We're going to come around, and we're going to come down this side here. And then to the very end, and then if you want, you can take a little bit of yellow green, come around this way. See how the colors changed on those greens? They look blue green, but they aren't because that's just the color behind it. And just put a little there. And that gives you not only your, here, let's tap in the, these guys here. But that gives you not only your um, highlight, but it also gives you another color for your leaf. Okay, so this is what we have so far.
Okay, I want you to get a liner if you have one, uh, or not a liner, this is a number two, it's uh, called a Dresden brush, but it's uh, from Jane Houston. Well, let me show you what it looks like. Looks like this. And all you're going to do is put it in the bright green and kind of side load it with the dark green. And you're just going to take and put these little, see how here you've got to put these stems in. If it's easier, do the light green first like this. Go all the way down to wherever you ended the stem. And then go back and put the dark green where you need to put it. Up in here. Definitely up in there. Maybe a little on the side here. Okay. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that, it really turns out pretty. Okay, and then we're going to do the stem that goes up around the top here. So I'm just going to do it. Just draw it in. Oops, here. Let me turn it so you can see it. Now, the light green, see if I put the light green on. It shows, but it doesn't show real well. But I'm still going to put it on because that's where I want it. I don't want it on there. Let's get it off of there. Okay. And then I'm going to take the dark green, kind of side load my brush with dark green. We're going to put dark green right here where it's coming out of the flower. You see how that worked? We're going to put a little dark green up here. Just on that one side, you want it on the underside. Be consistent though. If you put it on the underside now, it's going to be on the underside later. Here we go. We're going to do a little here, here. Just take your time. Then it's going to go over this way. So let me clean my brush. And I'm going to bring it over. I'm bringing it this way. Oops, I'm way out. I might, no, I'm in, right? You can see that? Yeah. Okay, bring it this way, and I'm doing the green first because it just seems like it works better. And this way, and then I'm also going to bring this stem up and over this way, just for some interest, and because they do grow kind of weird. Okay, this one we're going to do the same way, full load of yellow, side load of dark green. This is a little leaf down here. It's just a little, little one. That's a little dark. So we'll come up to the middle, come across. We're going to come down this side. I'm just going to bring this out this way a little here. Come on. Cooperate with me. There we go. And then I'm going to take the dark down here and a little dark along the side here. And there you go. And pat in. Or you can pan in, or you can line in. You can do whatever you want on those, um, you know, um, veins, whatever you want. And then we just have the bud. I just wanted to show you how I do a bud. So I do a bud like this from the bottom. Now, it would be helpful to have a picture of a bud. And I really don't have a lot of pictures of buds, but they all come from the center stem. I don't have any here. I was looking before we got started, and I thought that's one more thing. And they usually have a couple of different sections. So if you can get like a, a second section started on there here like this, that's good. And then pull it around this way. That's good. Just to the end. Oops, that's, that looks a little more like a leaf, doesn't it? Let's give it a little more roundness. Okay, now the thing that's going to make all of this obviously poppy-ish <laughs> is when you take this and you start... Oh, wait. I guess we're going to have to do it with the green. You're going to have to take your green and go... And you want to make it prickly. 
I'm using a very fine brush. You're going to want to go down the stems and make them prickly. And you don't really need to put more paint on the brush, just pull the paint out like this. I may have to put a little more paint just after I said that, of course. And just pull it out and keep pulling it out. Now, some of these are a little fat. You see how they're kind of fat and they shouldn't be that fat. And some of them are, you don't do it on the leaves. Just do it on this, oops. I'm gonna do it up here now. I pull out these first and then I'll go back and pull these out. Just kind of side load, side and then out. You want them to be pricky. And then you go back in with your pico pay and you can do the ones in the middle. And you will see some blue behind them, but it's just to give it the effect. And down here, you will see some yellow behind them. And where they're too thick, like here, then just, oops, just take your pico pay, use the side of it, and just kind of make it smaller. See, like that. Shape your, you know, shape your, your little thorny things, shape your stems, whatever you need to do. The pico pay is perfect for that. Okay. If you want to, you can take and put a little, like a little opening that comes down here. And that might be a little better to indicate that it opens up. Gorgeous. Well, start with the middle or start with the poppy. Add the depth to the poppy so that you can see the ruffles and all that kind of thing. Ruffles, you go under the ruffle in order to get the ruffle to stand out. And then just keep smoothing things until it looks the way you want it to. This is the way mine came out. This is your final fire, unless you, I mean, you can fire it again, but you don't have to. And then do your leaves and do your buds and do your stems. And they're simple. And then you put those little thorny things on there. And if they're too thorny for you, you know, you don't have to put as many on. It's just up to you. Pick up those brushes, keep painting. And I will see you next time. Alrighty, bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.